Welcome to another episode of the Wealthfair Book Club. And today we're going to broach the ever fun aspect of investing. Now stock market investing can seem daunting and so amateur investors may feel inferior to professional investors when it comes to picking stocks. And that's where Peter Lynch and John Rothschild come in to tell us that in fact the amateur investors can not only be as good as the professionals but even better in one of the best investing books ever written. One Upon Wall Street written in 1989. Now Peter Lynch is one of the most successful stock market investors in the world and was the fund manager of Fidelity's Magellan Fund from 1977 to 1990 during which time he grew its size to 14 billion dollars. John Rothschild was a writer specializing in financial matters who was a columnist for Fortune and Time. If you've seen Scam 1992 and now feel encouraged to invest in the stock markets, you have a number of options and even more alternatives. So where exactly should you invest? Peter Lynch's advice, take a deep dive into the markets, learn and just go for it. Now One Upon Wall Street extensively delves into Lynch's approach towards choosing stocks and his investment philosophy. He has great belief that amateur investors can learn to identify multi-baggers which are stocks that will snowball to multiples of the original value, which will generate a whole lot of wealth. And to do that, all you need to do is use a little bit of brain power and understand elementary mathematics. Equipped with these, you can be as good as the professionals of Wall Street and sometimes even better. According to the authors, amateur investors are more likely to find smaller cap companies in their area that aren't yet on the radar of Wall Street investment gurus. Lynch tries to relate himself to the masses by showing us that he's just a normal guy who's done tons of research, asked a lot of questions, and occasionally gets caught off guard by the stock market too. So this book has been bifurcated into three parts. Preparing to invest, picking winners, and the long-term view. In preparing to invest, Lynch basically breaks down the aspects of investing in stock markets and how you can be psychologically prepared for this. To invest in stock markets, you need absolute conviction because the stock markets victimize those who lack that conviction. You see, if you don't have that very conviction, you might reject those stocks which have a lot of potential and also welcome the wrong stocks that would make losses in the near future. Truth is, we can't time the stock market or predict its movements. If you want the best time to invest, it's whenever you find a good opportunity to do so. You're not necessarily going to find a stock that fits all your criteria. So according to Lynch, we need to just prioritize picking good stocks that are selling at a low value and let the markets do its magic. Picking winners is the second section of this book, where Lynch advises us to partake in meticulous research. He has even crafted a set of parameters for selecting stocks in the many categories he charted out, which includes slow growers, which have between 2 to 4% per annum growth, stalwarts, which have a 10 to 12% per annum growth, and fast growers, which have a 20 to 25% per annum growth. We're also told that betting on stocks that are close to home seems like a good idea. He contextualizes this by telling us how he chose Taco Bell as an investment after sampling one of their burritos, and all he did was keep his eyes open. Being so prescient that he chose these multi-baggers years before they blew up. Lynch seems to have an affinity towards those stocks which sound boring and which are involved in uninteresting businesses. The nuggets that even professional investors don't pay attention to. Even stocks which were part of industries that had no scope for growth and yet were doing well were particularly interesting. Everyday stocks aren't really seen as potential investments because they're not glamorous, they don't catch anyone's attention and they will not make you the center of attention at a party. And yet, these potential multi-baggers are efficiently run with robust numbers and market share, even though they're underappreciated and maybe even undervalued. So strike while the iron is hot. We have to understand the nature of the companies we invest in and why we hold the, these stocks. If it's because it's climbing, it may only help you in the short run. And in the longer run, you may make losses. You have to understand that the companies we're investing in are doing great or if only a product is because just one product's booming sales isn't necessarily commensurate to other products or overall sales. Companies with growth rates of over 50% are deemed suspicious by Lynch. One, because he believes the growth cannot sustain for long 
and invites more competition in a free market, thus affecting that growth. And two, it means that there will have to be major injections of capital in the future. This would mean incurring more debt or issuing new shares, neither of which might be a good shareholder's wish to have. Lynch also wants to make sure that diversification doesn't end up as diversification because they're mostly to satisfy egos by acquiring more. So it's more about being power drunk. We also have to make sure not to go for companies that borrow a lot of money because this just messes up their balance sheet. Now, it feels like logic and reasoning could be key to picking stocks, but the emotional component is integral as well. If you're still in doubt as to whether you should choose a stock, hold off on buying it. The long term view section emphasizes helping your, you design your portfolio. Ideally, you should try to pick as many exciting stocks as you can. But mostly amateur investors should have up to 10 stocks in their portfolio. And when markets fall or collapse, it's the best time for amateurs to identify these potential multibaggers. Peter Lynch came from humble beginnings and he rose up the ranks, understanding the nitty gritty intricacies of stock market investing. So he definitely comprehends the workings of it all. And he understands that to be a viable investor, you need conviction, resilience, patience, the ability to keep going after you get hit and the courage to make mistakes. And these enumerate the many psychological behavioral aspects to make money. Investors tend to overpay for stocks, but even if the stock does well, the investor wouldn't make much money off of it. By telling us how to approach the stock market, how many stocks to buy, when to buy and when to sell as a guide to investing, this book is the total package. With the fund charts and balance sheets, this book provides a very simplistic stock picking process. The book does not try to get too technical and does contextualize everything with fun anecdotal stories. Now with this book written 32 years ago, you're not going to get some insider stock tips, but you'll definitely get a viable investing approach. Even if you're an intermediate or an advanced investing professional, you should still read this to understand some of Peter Lynch's more technical aspects such as his PEG ratio. Anyway, it's always a win-win situation. There is a lot of practical advice for a hands-on approach to be involved with stocks that are stable and dividend producing investments. We need to do a lot of research and homework to learn which stocks to keep and to sell. Because as Peter Lynch says, selling your winners and holding your losses is akin to cutting flowers and watering weeds. If you wish to learn more about Peter Lynch, Wealthfair has deemed him a wizard of wealth and we've written an article going into depth about his life, his investing strategies and his psychology. So check out the link in the description. Stay tuned for more book reviews, interviews and much more. Thank you.